Josh James is a hardcore hunter from the backwards of New Zealand. I reckon my favourite weapon would have to be the longbow. There's heat and stay if you know how to get it. Matt Tebbett is a British chef who loves foraging for wild food. Wild ingredients are everything to me. Now the hunter and the chef have come together with one aim. To survive in the wildest places on earth. That's amazing. Well done, man. And prove they can still eat like kings. Oh, my. They'll forage and hunt for everything they need to stay alive. Wow, look at that. And to really test themselves, they're taking only basic kit. This is about me putting my wits against nature. Damn it. Out here, God to appreciate you. Every mouthful. What was the name of your restaurant? We made it! Borneo, the largest island in Asia, where the mighty Kinabatangan River meets the Sulu Sea. Mangrove swamps, swollen with monsoon rains, line the remote and unpredictable waterways. Kiwi hunter Josh and British chef Matt have paid a local fisherman to take them up the river, deep into the swamp. I'm a bit apprehensive about this location. There's a lot of swamp, there's a lot of mud. Yeah, it should be fairly challenging. The things that get me excited about wild food, they're all here, but they're gonna to be totally unknown. Oh, there's an eagle up there. They only have knives and a pot to cook with, a bow to hunt with, and hammocks for their beds. But with this basic kit, they're determined to eat like kings in these remote wetlands. Hey, look. Oh, there's a monkey. Small mammals thrive here. The river should be a plentiful source of fish. Yeah, that's a crocodile right there. See it? What? But predators stalk the land and the water. So we eat the prawns, and the crocodile eats us. Fish is circle circle alive. <laughs> How are we supposed to get in with all these in the way? That's a bloody good question. Uh, I reckon he's going to run aground soon. Presumably he'll stop before he reaches that. I bloody hope so. Is that sauce, mate? Oh. Yep. Jeez. That's an ugly boat. Even at high tide, the water is too shallow to go any further. Josh and Matt need to use a smaller boat to get them ashore. Is that really going to keep us afloat in these waters? I don't know. One way to find out, isn't it? A bit leaky. Yes, a lot leaky. <laughs> All right. Yeah, mate. Pile on in. Thanks, mate. All right. Thank you, Bar. Yeah, bye. Seven days, yeah? Seven. <laughs> <laughs> it's pointing down. <laughs> Until the fisherman returns, Matt and Josh will be surviving on their own. I didn't appreciate that boat until I got on this boat. The more it's in the water, the more it starts to leak. We need somewhere with a landing dock. Right there. Perfect. Right. Oh. Quick jump out before it sinks. Sweet as, bro. Really? Yeah. What do you reckon? I think it looks horrible. It's just a bloody dense. It's pretty thick, isn't it? Yeah. There's no breeze coming through either. The humidity and the heat is going to be the biggest challenge. Uh, but we've got a river right there, which is good, which means we've got water. So I reckon we'll be right. So what's the priority? What are we going to do? It's going to hammer down with rain, so we probably have to build a roof of some sorts. We really need to crack into it quite quickly, I think. It's rainy season, so building a shelter fast is vital. What we're gonna do is get some of these, right? And put them in, so that's the bottom, that's the tip, basin tip, stack them in, and then done. Okay, fine, all right. 
It's roasting, isn't it? Yeah. By mid-morning, the temperature hits 30 degrees. The boy should be drinking at least three liters of water a day. Got water, but if we don't have fire, we can't bloody drink. Tropical rivers can be a source of dangerous bacteria and parasites, so they need to boil it before it's safe to drink. I think the hardest thing to come across is going to be tinder. I haven't seen anything that's got really fine fibres or fine hairs. I'm going to throw a couple of sparks on this crushed up palm leaf and see if it's going to take. So that's a no. This stuff, no good for tinder. We've got to find something else. Found dead tree. I'm just shaving, shaving the dead wood and hopefully when I put a spark in that, that's going to hold the spark and start smouldering. No, so that's a fail. That is not going to work. That is not going to get our fire going. The clouds are getting thicker. I think it's going to rain this afternoon. Wouldn't that be lovely, hey? <laughs> Bit of rain. Hopefully Matt's got that bloody roof finished and then she's watertight. Look at that, it's like a sunroof. <laughs> Check that out. How's your firewood hunting? Got a bit of a problem here, bro. What? Not much tinder. Really? Why, uh, why is this so hard? We're in a bloody forest. It's all yeah, wet. I know, it's just not many suitable bits to get going. In these hot and humid conditions, wood often rots before it dries out. Josh needs to find tinder soon, or they'll be forced to drink unsterilized water. Oh, it's not very stringy. Too rotten. I'll give these ones a go. Just shave bits of bark off this fine here. That looks quite stringy, that might, might be what we're after. Because it's so hot and humid, we don't need this fire for heat, but it is really important to have a fire so we can boil our water. Bang, we've got a winner. Boom, fire. It's cranking. Water, warm. Tepid water. Cool. Is it cool down? Mmm. Looks alright actually. That's man. It's salty. It's really salty. That's horrible. I thought it was good. I reckon what's happened is that tide has pushed the water back up and um, the salt water's come up and we're drinking salt water. Okay, so we've only got one chance of getting water that isn't as salty as this. Low tides. Josh and Matt are in the estuary of the Kinabatangan River. At high tide, the sea flows in, flooding the river with salty, undrinkable water. Josh hopes when the tide recedes, fresher water will flow back down the river. Until then, they've got nothing to drink. It would also be good to get some bamboo. We can use it to store water in, so when the tide's low, we can scoop a bunch of fresh water into the bamboo. Fine. OK, I'll do that. Oh. Yeah, that's good. We don't have any water until... Uh, later on today, and that's my biggest concern. In the meantime, there's not a lot I can do. While he waits for low tide, Josh goes in search of food. I'm trying to keep in the shade so that sun doesn't bake me, and I'm trying to use as little energy as possible because I'm bloody knackered, and we won't have anything to drink till this evening. So. 
So I think I'm going to pull in the hair under these trees here. I've happened to notice these little snail things, and in the absence of anything else to use for bait, I'm going to use these suckers. Josh plans to lead the lines out overnight. I've got about five set lines, should hopefully produce a fish or two tomorrow. Low tide. Late afternoon. Time to boil the river water to see if it's drinkable. If it is, they will store it in this bamboo. Is that it? Yeah, lift it upside down, we'll tap all that crap out. Right, try this. Huh? It's bloody perfect, mate. It's good, eh? It's good, it's good. So, this is good. We've got shelter, we've got water, and now we've got something to keep it in. I'm hungry. We just need food, exactly. We need you to catch food. At the end of day one, they've mustered a basic shelter, fire, and water. But they still haven't found any food. Pretty bloody horrible. It's muddy. Uh, you can't sit down anywhere because things will eat you. But it's just, it's, it's going to be really oppressive and very relentless, I think, this week. In the remote mangrove swamps of Borneo's Kinabatangan River, British chef Matt and Kiwi hunter Josh have survived their first night. They're determined to prove they can thrive here, but so far, they've eaten nothing. What are we gonna do for food? I actually just wanna lie here, I'm knackered. Cause you're inherently lazy. I am. Right, come on, get up. I'm exhausted. I think I have, might have a mild touch of heat stroke from yesterday. Also very hungry. Josh left five fishing lines out overnight downstream. Bloody hell. There's a bit of water in there. He needs their boat to check if he's caught anything. Oh, my bloody bailing pot's on the other end. I decided to do this the easy way and tip. Right. Huh. Right, Matt's not up there. We lose that, we're not gonna have anything to cook in. There's a bit of an upstream wind, so the pot should be up here somewhere. Might have sunk. Matt's gonna have a fit. In the jungle, Matt's foraging for edible wild plants. And here we go. All this is what I'm looking for. It's bloody everywhere. This is perfect. There's ginger as far as the eye can see. Ginger is found all over Asia. Widely used as a spice for cooking, it's also used medicinally as a cure for nausea. That's right. Oh my God. That's beautiful. Beautiful, up like no other ginger I've ever tried. Hey right, mate, how'd you go? How'd the fishing? I got ginger. Check that out. All right. Yeah. Finally, we had a Dutch oven. We can make some ginger tea. What are you talking about? Oh, well, funny, <laughs> funny story was, I went, you know, I was bailing the boat out with the Dutch oven. You lost it. Well, not at first. <laughs> I put it on the boat and it tipped off into the water. On the other hand, I do have a fish. What the are you going to cook it in? We've got over half a week to go, and we've got nothing to boil water in or cook with. Well, well what use is that now? We're going to eat it raw. Well, no, we still have the lid. And we have bamboo, bro. Easy. Well, what are we going to do with bamboo? Put on the fire and boil stuff in it. Simple as that. Simple as that. 
Indigenous tribes have been cooking with bamboo for thousands of years. Without a Dutch oven, Matt needs to learn fast. Here's the plan. We're going to cook in this middle compartment in between these two nodules, chop the top off there, yeah. plonk the fish in. Yeah. Isn't it going to go up in flames? Hopefully it'll cook the fish before it explodes in the flames. Smack it in. Yeah, that's all we've got. The sun's relentless, isn't it? I'm exhausted. Moisture in the green bamboo stops it from burning. Should we leave it a little bit longer? I'll tell you what, I think it's not far off, eh? That's great. Can we eat it now? I'm impressed with that. Yeah, grab that in. Oh, let's not spill it, eh? Oh, oh crikey. <laughs> Mate, that's so disappointing. Look, one little fish. Well, it is, but it's our only little fish. It's the first meal of the bloody week. Cheers. That fish is really good. It's really good with it, eh? Catfish is my new favourite fish. Don't eat off your knife. Why not? <laughs> you like my bloody mother sometimes, aren't well, you? I feel like I have to be. To Josh, be you are? Joshua! Just because we're out here doesn't mean you can let yourself go, does it? I think it does. We haven't exactly nailed it yet. No. But it's a start. We need to find meat. Let's do it. Want to enjoy it, yeah? Or yes. Just get by. Have that. That's it? Have that. No, just whack it and smack it in there. Look, have yeah. you been taking notes on how to be annoying? <laughs> <laughs> this small catfish only contains around 300 calories. They need something bigger. Experience bow hunting on New Zealand's South Island. He's an expert tracker. We've just found some mud on this palm here, that's from an animal of some sort, probably a pig because it's low down, there's none up high. Right here, you can see the smears of mud up and down here. So he's given himself a stretch, come along and gone. So this particular pig is only about this high, I'd say maybe. 50 pounder, 40, 50 pounder, so not really big, but still big enough. It's extremely hot. It's, uh, it's a bit disappointing, I can't really use my bow. It's a little bit too thick to bow hunt, to stalk animals. And it's also incredibly hard to see anything. If there was a pig there, I wouldn't see it till he took off running. I'm making such a bloody racket. Hmm. All right, I think I'm gonna go back to camp and devise a uh, some kind of trap to trap a pig. Pig trap building 101. Basic design, there's gonna be a triangle about this big and I'm gonna make it four nodes long. So one, two, three, four. Josh plans to finish the trap before sundown, so he can leave it out overnight. But it's 32 degrees, and he's only eaten half a catfish in two days. Almost over it. I'll build this pig trap, then I'll be over it. No pain, no gain. If they catch a pig, Matt needs a way to cook it. Josh is very confident about catching pig. So what I had in mind is to build a bit of a sort of smoker affair. I'm gonna run these 
slats the whole length of this tabletop. If we've got a decent sized pig, we could put the whole damn thing on it. With its combination of flexibility and strength, bamboo is a perfect natural building material. Tie this last few in. Look at that, there you go. Drop the bloody car on that, that ain't going anywhere. Mate, it's beautiful. How is it for you? Exhausting. That looks fab, look. Oh, it looks heavy, that's what it looks. It's not too bad, just lift this end and make sure we can lift it. We need to get it out, set as soon as possible, so we're just gonna need to carry it 50 meters that way. Okay. Bang a couple of pins in, make the trigger system, she's done. <sighs> Heavy old bamboo, isn't it? With only snails for bait, Josh is finally ready to set the trap. Pig's gonna pull that black thing, which is gonna pull that. Boom, that's gonna fall in. That's gonna come across the door, holding said pig inside. Cool. All right. You happy? I'm thirsty and hungry. I don't know about happy. <laughs> be happy when there's a bloody pig in there. Since Josh and Matt arrived in the swamp, they've barely eaten a thing. Time to see if the pig trap has worked. Well, trap's been sprung. Nothing in it. <laughs> I'd say he's probably got his nose under there and forced his way out. Just wasn't heavy enough to keep him in there. It's this is not great, is it? This is this is the final kind of kick in the. With the pig trap a failure, catching and cooking great food in the swamp might be impossible. To be honest, I'm massively disappointed. Massively disappointed. Um, we need a plan B. So what's plan B? Um, I don't really know. There's big prawns in that river. Prawn traps. That'd be good. They're like this over here. Big prawns, proper prawns. Let's do it. With two decades of bushcraft experience, Josh gets to work on a tried and tested prawn trap. This is the old splitting the bamboo technique. What I'm doing now, I'm just bending it backwards so all the little bits that I've chopped split so it opens up nice and flat. How you going there, horse? Yeah, good. Um, I think we're nearly ready. Reckon those prawns will get through there? Uh, I hope so. Sent from the bait will lure the catch through a funnel made from bamboo and cord. If it works, it will allow the prawns in, but stop them finding their way out. All right, yeah, that's great, but we've got a whopping great hole right there. The basket needs to allow water to flow through it. But if the holes are too big, the prawns will escape. We're gonna have to use your scarf, bro. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, we need to get this thing in the water, bro. It's getting dark. It's okay. Look, there you go. Wrap that round. Oh, he's dirty animal. <laughs> you know that's upsetting. <laughs> oh. Hold that. Perfect. Right, there we go. Beautiful. A fish head from their only meal so far will act as bait. <laughs> but they need to cover it to stop it disintegrating in the river. It's all in there. All the guts. Be good if we had a sock. Throw one of your socks. Why is it always my clothing? Oh, it's stinky. That's good. We can drop that in there. Uh, just going to chuck it in the river. Right. Use the. Uh, the bow line of the boat. Right. That's it. I'm absolutely exhausted. Um, we're starving hungry. And, um, and all our effort has gone into melting. Building one trap. Since Josh and Matt arrived on the Kinabatangan, they've only eaten half a catfish each. 
Jeez, it's almost fell in then. Here we go. They need the prawn basket to be a success, or they're in trouble. Is it heavy? It's got a bit of weight to it, but I don't know if that's just water or what. It's gonna be water. <coughs> oh, that fish stinks. <laughs> oh no, oh no, there is, yep. What do we got? There's a bunch of prawns down there. A bunch? Breakfast. Right, show us. Amazing. Check it out. There's some big ones in there. Very eh? cool, right, get them out. Jesus Christ, yeah. Like wow! Shot at those. Holy crap! They're big boys, aren't they? Wow. Sweet. Ow. It's got little claws. Oh, there's Ow. some big ones in there, too. <laughs> Jeez. Why don't you go grab some of them, more of that ginger? Yeah, yeah. I'll go and get the fire going. Yeah. We're in. Pretty excited because once this fire is cranking, that means we can eat. They've run out of energy. I think I ran out of energy two days ago. And we're away. No doubt Matt's gonna m around for an hour and a half cooking the bloody stuff instead of just getting it done. <laughs> to make the most of the river prawns, Chef Matt is foraging for spices. Now look. So this is Galangal, and compared with a wild ginger, it's much more kind of fruity uh, and sort of peppery in its heat. True Southeast Asian flavours. If you know what to look for, these wetlands are full of unique ingredients. This, this is quite interesting. I know these called Bularan. So they look like green olives got a texture of fruit. Oh my god. And they've got they've got the taste and the sourness of a really really sour apple. Really good. Come on bro I'm hungry. Look. Recognize it? Mmm galangal ginger. Very good. Bro. Look at that. What's this thing? <laughs> Try it. It's really it's beautifully sweet. Good, huh? Eh? Holy yeah. Right, okay, so I'm gonna start cooking. So here is the main event, and this is what I've been getting very excited about. These are just beautiful. I've never seen prawns with blue legs and pincers like this. We just don't have them. They are just stunning. There's so much flavour in these prawn heads that we're not going to waste them. So I'm just smash them up and I'm just going to stuff them right to the bottom of this container. They'll make the most beautiful stock. All that flavour is going to flood those ingredients. Let's start layering. So, fire down some pieces of the galangal. Get some of that bit around. A couple of the prawns. This is so bizarre. This is such a bizarre way to cook. So, a little bit more galangal. Some of the bull around. Some more prawns. So in with the water. This is mental. This is the most bizarre thing I've ever done. Hopefully, 
How long have you been hanging out with me for? Come on. Yeah, carefully. All right. Right. Should we open it? <laughs> mate, look at that. Oh, my God. This pool is beautiful. Jeez, mate, that looks bloody delicious. Can we eat it now? You can smell the, the gallon gal. You know what would be really awesome? What? Is if we could eat it now? <laughs> gallon gal? Yeah, I made you a spoon. Yeah, I'm trying to get it out. You, that's what the spoon's yeah, for. Shut your face. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. Do you treat all your customers like this? And swear at them and wait for two hours before you serve them a meal? Yeah. That's bloody gorgeous. That stock is amazing. Oh, these prawns are so good. Oh, it's beautiful. It tastes a bloody delicious. Bit of a shame we don't have more to eat. But the good thing is we do have a food source now, which is prawns, and I expect that prawn trap to keep to keep on catching day after day after day. This place that looked a bit rubbish on the way in is actually proving pretty cool now. In the swamps of the Kinabatangan River, Josh and Matt are trying to thrive in the wild with only basic equipment. Another small catfish. This is really kind of going native. Fishy. Not much, we're going out and grabbing things from the wild. After five hungry days, they finally mastered the river, but are still a long way from eating like kings. <laughs> Bringing home the bacon since 1976. Small bacon. It is a very small bacon. I agree. You want me to cook this horse? Yeah, man. You look beat down. I am. So if you want to cook it, I'm happy with that. Sweet. I shall go and cook the fish. Oh, yeah, look at that. Dump that sucker on there. With just one catfish to share, Matt goes to check on the prawn trap. There's the boat. The boat should be attached to that rope there. How the hell are we going to get back? He's an idiot. Without a boat, Josh and Matt have no way out of the swamp. I haven't got the energy to start running in, shouting and screaming. There's no point. The boat's gone. What are we going to do? Oh, mate. Done late. Look awesome. Here's food. It's good fish, isn't it? The old catfish. So how would you say your, your day has gone today? Good, actually. You forgot to tie the bloody boat up. And we don't have a boat. <laughs> <laughs> we don't put a downer on your <laughs> day? <laughs> how the hell do we get out of here mm. on day seven? <laughs> Bamboo raft. I so. think that's our only option. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? It's Josh and Matt's last day in the swamp, and they've lost their boat. There's a b in it. The pig trap Josh built from bamboo is still empty. That was a big build for nothing. But he's got a plan to turn it into a raft. How are we going to do this? We'll just dismantle it here, and we'll build a raft, put it in the river, float on out of here tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm bloody hungry, yep. so I reckon let's go around in the mud, see if we can get some crabs, Sure. see what else is there. Cool. And then we'll just cook it up all in one big hit. Let's go. 
Do we be concerned about having our legs ripped off by crocodiles? Yeah, probably. And if I see one, what happens? Uh, scream like a little girl, yeah? So I know to get out of the water. <laughs> let's get a stick and let's dig down a foot. If what? If they're clams here, they're going to be living in the first foot of mud. Well, presumably there's not going to be a bed of them underneath, is there? But back home, all we have to do is walk down the lagoon, walk out to knee deep water, dig down, and they're this far below the surface. Beds, whole beds of them. There should be clams everywhere. You do that, I'll have a look around the edge first. All right. Ah, hello. Did you get one? No, I got a snail shell. Where there's one, you'll probably find a couple, I'd say. Well, I'm looking for that one. Yeah, it's just so much effort going into such little reward. I don't really know what I'm looking for here. I don't know what size they are. Oh, I thought I had one then. Ah. They're massive, bro. How far down do you go? Not very far at all, about, I don't know. This far? There you go. One clam. Beauty. They're pretty decent. They're a good size. How many have you got? Two. So that leaves us with heaps. Oh, beautiful. What have you been doing, bro? Sleeping. Let's go. Do you want to hold those on? Hold on those for no, me? No, okay. <laughs> no. Carry your own clams. To go with the clams, Josh checks the prawn trap. Oh my god, is that you that smells or that? Bit of both, I think. You need a shower. I don't want that scarf back anymore. Oh wow, there's heaps in there, eh? Oh, we've got a crab. Look at the size of those claws. This is gonna be great. We've got enough here for a feast. We don't need a pig! Nah. Who we needs don't. a pig? Only losers need pigs. Not us. Not us. I am looking forward to eating it, so can we please put it on the fire and cook it? After some modifications, Matt's bamboo smoker can finally be put to use. So overall the, the week has been erratic but the fact is we've got seafood that if that was served to me in the south of France quite frankly I wouldn't be able to afford it it's too expensive while Matt cooks Josh gets to work on the raft why oh, crikey I'm not gonna miss this heat ah uh, Took so long to build the damn thing and it's just coming to bits. Look at that. We should be sitting back eating greasy pork chops now. Now I've got all these beautiful clams. I'm just gonna go into the hinge and prise these open. So the clams I'm used to at home are much smaller. We pick them off the coast where I live in Wales, but essentially they're the same. They're just a lot bigger than that. There's one serious clam. Well, this is something so far removed from a day job. You know, in a kitchen you're surrounded by all mod cons. You've got controllable heat, you've got pans. Imagine that. You've got flat surfaces. We don't have any of that. Uh, but what we do have are these beautiful and very simple ingredients. to make this bomb proof we just have to use it to get us on the river and float down so I'm not gonna go overboard with the whole thing oh man this heat is just absolutely nailing me I've got a pounding headache and I'm also extremely hungry I reckon it's going to float. Tell 
take these clams. Now that's hot, they're poached, they're well cooked, which is really, really pleasant. And the clam meat, clam meat's gorgeous. That, after a lot of sweat, uh, is a bloody, bloody good feast. Josh! Oh. <clears throat> Food! Have a seat. Mmm. Some really good meat in that claw. These are the best prawns I've ever had. Mm. How's your raft going? I haven't actually tested it to see if it floats or not. Uh -huh. We're just going to wing it. I'm good with that. This is the highlight of my week. <laughs> food eat? Mm. Good food, good company. <laughs> what more could a bloke ask for? Who needs pig, huh? When you got prawn guts. <laughs> We've both got a bit grumpy near the end, haven't we? It's because it's claustrophobic and hard. Yeah, right. We can't just go for a walk along a big beach. Yeah. Or for a nice paddle down the river in the evening. <laughs> 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 That'd be my fault. <laughs> you happy? I'm happy. As long as you're happy, Matt. Well, that's the main thing. Uh, diary cam. Last night, I think it's all over tomorrow. All we got to do is pack up camp, jump on our bloody raft, float on down the river. And on that note, I bid you all a good evening. Hello. Oh, I want to shower really badly. Looking forward to that croc infested river there, mate. Really? Matt and Josh survived the swamps of the Kinabatangan and finally managed to catch and cook the world-class food they dreamed of. Let's go, bro. Now, it's time to take their chances on the river. Is that what's going to sail us to freedom? Yep. Is it more like going to sink us to the bottom? We'll be right. <laughs> really? Yeah, mate. No worries. <laughs> the week has been hard. But it's been quite exciting to get into that whole kind of regional, tribal method of cooking. There you go. You grab onto that palm right there. Nick. That was a close one. But all in all, we managed to just scrape through and come out on top. I figure if we meet a crocodile, we'll just deal with that when we get to it. It's a bit unstable. It's not bad, though. All right. OK, I'll... Uh... Deep, huh? So if we did encounter a crocodile, yep. what would we do? Just hang on to the raft. If he grabs you, he's going to take you underneath. You could probably, if you're quick enough, stab him in the eye with your knife. The other option is to uh, stab it right where the head meets the body. You'll probably have to hit it three or four times to force it in there. And then once it's in, wiggle it backwards and forwards so you can severe that spinal cord. Hey, look, there's our boat. Hey, man. How are you? Ah, oh, 